This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Okay, so having gone through and covered current tax, working out what the tax payable balance was on the statement of financial position, and then adjusting your estimated tax expense for any brought forward under or over provision in the year, we now move in to this complex world of deferred tax. So what we have is just a series of videos that introduce deferred tax and what it is. We'll then go through and look at an example whereby there is no deferred tax within it, just so that we can get to understand why we have to account for deferred tax before we then begin to look at the actual accounting for deferred tax and bring it in finally uh, with a numerical example. And then once we've done that, I think there's a few examples at the end of the notes uh, to just go through there and consolidate your understanding and advance it just a little bit further with regards to revaluation. So there's quite a little bit to get through. So make sure that you set yourself enough time, uh, break it out into smaller, more manageable chunks. And don't forget to use your study text to help you along as we go along. So what we've got there in terms of our introduction, uh, let's have a look. Uh, about what deferred tax actually is. Uh, deferred tax is looking into the future uh, and thinking about what's going to happen to our tax charge in the future based upon something that has happened today. Okay. Which from a tax perspective is just a little bit alien. You know, from, from a tax authority's perspective, they just look at what has happened this year and then they will tax it in the current year. OK, you pay it in the next accounting period, but your tax expense for the tax authorities is based on what's happened this year and this year's tax rates. From an accounting perspective, we want to give consideration about what's happened this year that might impact our tax charge in the future. OK, so the key thing to go through and take is that this is an accounting adjustment. Uh, it's just an accounting entry. When we account for deferred tax with the debits and with the credits, we do not adjust the tax payable balance. We leave it as the estimate that the tax authorities or our tax accountant has provided to us. We don't ring up Revenue and Customs. Hello, uh, it's Chris here. Uh, I'm an accountant. And you've told me what the, the tax bill is, but I've done some deferred tax accounting and, and I think we need to, to change the, the tax expense. OK, they just put the phone down on you. Bzz, done. OK, it is just purely an accounting entry to help us, maybe not really help us, confuse us with regards to the matching concept. And the main reason that ar it arises is because. What goes through your accounting profits, so profits before tax, uh, is not equal to your profits chargeable to corporation tax. So you might have an expense that goes through your profits, but that might not be taxable until some point in the future. Similarly, with your income, you might have income going through your accounting profits, but it doesn't go through PCTCT and will be tacked at some point in the future. So that just leads to a bit of an accounting mismatch, doesn't it? You know, if we've got an item going through profits, we would expect to see the tax impact of that within our financial statements in the same year, wouldn't we? Based upon the matching concept. But because the tax rules are different to the accounting rules, deferred tax may then arise. So what we've got in terms of our accounting and taxable profit is that there are differences between them. The first difference that may arise is a permanent difference. So that's a one off difference. OK, uh, whereby what goes through PBT uh, will never, ever, ever be taxed or will be tax allowed within PCTCT. So it's gone through your accounting profits, but will never hit your tax computation. If that's the case, there is no future tax consequence. So therefore, there is no 
deferred tax consequence. It's gone through our accounting profits, but it will never, ever, ever impact our tax. So there's no deferred tax impact at all. So we can ignore that for deferred tax. The two scenarios that you're looking at from an exam perspective would be client entertaining. So client entertaining is an expense within your company accounts, but that is not allowable as a deduction in your tax computation. So we will see a reduction within our profits, but we will never, ever, ever get a deduction in our tax computation. So there is a difference, but that's a permanent difference. It won't be resolved at some point in the future. There's no future tax consequence, so there's no deferred tax consequence. The other side of the coin is you're looking at your UK dividend income. We record the UK dividend income on an accrual basis within our accounts, but there will be no tax consequence on it. UK dividend income is your franked investment income that helps you work out what your tax rate should be. OK, so it will never, ever be taxed within your tax computation. So therefore, uh, there is a difference, but that difference is permanent and therefore there will be no deferred tax, which is yay, great, fantastic, because we don't need to deal with it in terms of the accounting. OK, but what about when we have temporary differences? This is where deferred tax kicks in because we've got our accounting rules and the tax authorities have their tax rules and our accounting rules will be different to the tax rules. So if I've got an expense, I will expense it on an accruals basis. The tax authorities will have their detailed tax legislation about how that expense is taxed. Similarly with the income. You record the income on an accruals basis. However, when it comes to looking at the income being taxed in your tax computation, that is normally done on a cash receipts basis. So therefore, we might have accrued for the income this year, but because we don't receive it next year, there is no tax consequence this year. However, there will be a future tax consequence when we receive the money. It will be taxed within the next accounting period. So there is a difference, but that is only temporary. It's something that will reverse out, if you like, in the future years. So that's whereby we have a deferred tax consequence. And that's where we need to look at the accounting. And the two examples that you're likely to see. It's likely only really to be one is the first one. Uh, the depreciation and capital allowances. We've got our depreciation based on our wonderful straight line reducing balance basis. It's all subjective. It's an estimate. So we can go through there and record the depreciation using whatever percentage or useful life that we think is giving us the most relevant and reliable information. Tax authorities don't like accountants and their judgments. They like rules because then those rules can be applied. So we've got depreciation going through our taxable or our accounting profits. The tax authorities charge you their tax version of depreciation. In the UK, we refer to that as your capital allowances. So that's usually on a reducing balance basis. So the issue that you've got there is you've bought this asset. You know what the total cost of it is. You depreciate that total cost through your accounting profits every year. But the tax impact will be different because the tax depreciation is different. You will ultimately claim the entire cost of that asset, but the cost will be claimed in different portions in different periods. From an accounting perspective, we have the depreciation charge. From a tax perspective, we have the tax depreciation aspect. And those figures will be different. So therefore, there is a difference, but that is only temporary. As at the end of the asset's life, we'll have claimed all of the tax allowances and we'll have claimed all of the tax depreciation. That's the one that regularly crops up within the exam. The other one to bear in mind is just your overseas dividend income. 
because you will receive that overseas dividend income and it will be recorded on an accruals basis within your statement of profit or loss. But the tax effect won't be until the following accounting year when the cash is received. So we've got the accrual of the income and no tax. And then in the next accounting period, we have no income and tax on that income. So there's, a, there's an accounting mismatch, isn't there? Ideally, we would like the income and the tax to be recognised in the same period. And that's what deferred tax is going to do. OK, so that's just a little bit of the background in terms of what deferred tax is. Uh, let's go through there and have a look at the examples.